right, we're gonna get started here. Uh, so pretty much, thank you guys for coming. It's gonna be a fun hiking trip up the mountain. Uh, excited. Well, yeah, welcome to our tour through the wild and wonderful trails of Mount Gordo. Uh, we're about to get started on this hike, so listen oh, up. Sorry. Be careful of the muscle twitches. Fleetly, please, because it is so easy to th yeet someone off this mountain. And like I said, if you brought a weapon with you or a flare, please put in the cooler. This is a Sorry. really <laughs> you guys. All right, you guys, stop punching each other. I can't help him, man. Is this a hike or fight club? <laughs> All right. Non-violent. I know. Why's everyone punching each other? All right. So like I said, if you brought a weapon with you or a flare, we kindly ask you to drop it off in the box right there. Uh, really just. Just I'm so sorry. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> okay, Damn, guys. Take some, take a Xanax or something. Take a muscle yeah, relaxer. Whatever, whatever muscle you're pressing, stop pressing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Just our guides are all arms for safety. Except for Tommy Chun. He lost his privileges after, well, let's just say there was an incident hey, with a raccoon last time. He hasn't earned raccoon. those privileges back yet. Look, Tommy, you haven't. <laughs> no. But he is the only one on the trip that does not have a weapon. All of all our guides do. Uh, but the murder kids have been pretty calm. So this hike is meant to be calm and relaxing, a chance to soak in the natural beauty around us. So let's keep it peaceful. Anyone who disturbs the peace, well, let's just say they might never be seen from again. So let's all keep it chill, stay on the trail and enjoy it. Also be sharing some legends and lore of the land as we go. So stick close to me, I'll try to get in the middle of all of you guys. So that way you all can hear me loud and clear. Uh, but we're gonna make some memories. Uh. Yep, yeah, I'll have my lead. I'll have my lead. Hiker here, uh, Frankie, he'll lead us, but I'm gonna be in the middle so that way you all can hear me and stuff. Uh, so uh, we'll go ahead and start walking. It's Frankie and right. Gracie at the back, so. Yep. Pete here, oh, I'm sorry. the lead. Pete, sorry. Um, I just wanna day. say, keep in mind, we're gonna be telling legends and stories of this way, so please try not to speak over. Um, Mr. Dre here. And let's have a good time. I'll be leading the way. Sit, cl sit close, uh, watch out, don't have twitches. Let's have a good time. Okay, so we're gonna stop right in front of the house right over here real quick, so we'll do a quick story up here. We're stopping already? We just started. <laughs> well, just real quick. Well, we, I haven't been able to tell the legend here yet. Oh, geez, I'm, I'm, I'm tired already. This is gonna okay. be something. So just real quick. I don't think we've ever had a group this big. No, we haven't. This, right. is, uh, so this, this is uh, this is fun. Passed down generations from my family. So right here in Cashview, Cashview, uh, Catfish View and the Lighthouse. So in the foggy dusk that settles over Catfish View, an ancient lighthouse stands tall against the brooding sea. Its stone walls are thick and weather-worn, scarred by years of salt and storm. Local whisper that it's no ordinary beacon. They say it was built long ago, not by the hands of mere men, but with the aid of magic. Crafted by the old mystic who wished to protect the coast from evil spirits and things far worse things that lurk beyond human sights. Legends say that when the lighthouse was raised, a powerful barrier was woven into its foundation. This barrier, inv barrier invisible to the eye, hums with a strange energy that radiates, radiates from the tower like a protective aura. A shield of light wraps around the entire area. They say that any dark entity or creature that cries across it will burn in a seary, searing flash of red flame. Consumed by the purity of the lighthouse magic before it can touch the lands of Catfish View, some villagers claim to have seen bursts of the strange red fire out in the waves, often in the dead of night, flashing just as heavy fog begins to roll in, as if something unseen was testing the barrier only to be cast back. The lighthouse keeper, an elderly woman with silver hair who is known only as Grandma Laura, speaks little about the tower's true purpose back in the day, but her eyes portray a hint of knowledge each time someone asks about the barrier, or the eerie sounds that echo on the storm and knots. It says she's the descendant of the original mystic, sworn to protect the lighthouse secrets and ensure its flame never dies. And the flame itself is strange, no ordinary light but a silvery red fire that flickers in the wind. Some say it's internal flame, fueled by the lighthouse magic, a sentinel standing guard over the town. 
Grandma Laura, she had a book thick with dust of ages, filled with those spells and rattans passed down from mystic to mystic. She never let it leave her side, for she knows that sh should the lot house ever go dark, the bear would weaken, and the creatures from the other side would pour into catfish view, slipping through the cracks between the worlds drawn to the hidden coast. One night, a particular fierce storm tore through the town, snapping trees and sending waves crashing against the shore. The high house went dark for the first time. Anyone could remember, and a chill crept through Catfish Field. That's why only this little house still remained, because of the uh, monsters, legends say, that destroyed the town until the barrier came back up through the mystic caster power. Now, whenever a fog rolls in or the waves crash harder than usual, the villagers of Catfish View this house glance toward the lot house, comforted by the flank glow that cuts through the mist, reminding them that Barrister holds now. That old magic still guards them, even from the unseen eye. Or at least that's what the legends say from my grandma. All right. All right, that was great. All right. Will there be a test on that? Did you turn no. I don't want nothing I'm to do with any of that. I don't care. All right. Okay, right, so this so really is our biggest walk. group. Oh yeah, let's go. Hopefully none of these ruffians get revenge. Yeah. Hey, let's try and stay in a line, folks. Uh, yeah, probably good. Best we can, let's try and stay in a line. Like a bunch of baby yeah, ducks. Right, yeah, I knew that was tall. <laughs> What's up, Mike? Oh, I was just trying to tell everybody to make sure to stay close together. Oh, I'll stay real close to you, Mike. Oh, we but, can all yeah, stay in the group. Yeah, just more like I stayed doing... in the group about 16 years ago, man. What? That's crazy, man. Right. That's crazy, man. You're wild, here. man. Alright. Port left. Yeah, it seems when you're holding on to your pad cap, you walk a little slow. Uh, yeah. We may all want to try to walk the same speed. <laughs> I know. If you do I start to fall behind, legs. go ahead and jaw up to catch up a little bit if you need to. Alright. That way we can all stay in a group. If people fall behind, jaw and catch up. I think that's what he said. Yes, all if you right. fall behind, just jog and catch up with the group. Come on now. Mount Gordo is such a mystical, most secretive part of this landscape. But uh, hopefully everyone can hear me. Hey, but feel free to jog and catch up with the group. I anyone in the back might be able to. Gracie, back there, can you hear me? We can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Surprisingly. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Just out of your shot now, but... Here. Oh. <laughs> yep, okay. I gotta walk a little bit slower for you guys. Oh, right. we'll catch so up, Ray. Right? Such a mystical, almost secretive part of the landscape, a place where if you tread lightly, you might just catch a glimpse of the mountain's quieter residence. In the early morning light, it's as if the whole area is slowly waking up, furling itself to the brave few soul of venture into its heart. Among the soft, whispering pods live a family of coyotes. The oldest, a scruffy, wise one. Feel free to jog and, and catch up if you need to, bud. You might see him trouting along right. the rocky path with his nose to the ground. Uh, tracking sense, only he can sense. Dusty's usually following. Make sure you're listening to the stories, man. Name for the stick he always seems to be chewing on. The other coyotes keep their distance, knowing Dusty has earned his wisdom. But Twig sees him as a playmate, always tugging at his tail, yipping in excitement. I like your charge of picking the scenery. Uh, then there's Rosie, the gentle doe who has made the base of Mount Godo her home. Rosie loves to wander close to the hiking trail, especially at dusk when the sun is low. She's skittish, but if you're quiet enough, she might linger. Study you with her big, curious eyes. She's exercising you up, deciding if you're as harmless as you look or if you got patience to stand in the stillness. Rosie has a young fawn, Pep, who just learned the ins and outs of the forest. Pep's curious for the fall, always nudging flowers and investigating strange sounds, much to Rosie's jargon. On the boulders near the summit, there's a hawk named Flicker, who spends her days soaring above the mountain peaks and sweeping down the rest on the highest branches. Flicker is a skilled hunter, but rumor has it she's got a soft spot for the little squirrel family nearby. The squirrels, Skitter, Pip, and Cheeky scamp around, gathering acorns, darting through the foliage, knowing they're safe from the Flicker's claws. 
Sometimes, if you're lucky, you'll see them. If you do your hike too, thanking her for her grace. She simply watches over them like a silent guardian of the mountain. And the trees, oh, the trees of Mount Gordo have secrets of their own. Found a quiet. I think they were just uh, talking to each other, figuring out muscles. Yeah. Just make. You're good. You can sure go we... jog and catch up with the group. Just making sure we're out for them. Hey, folks, you can jog and catch up with the group. It'll still do your uh, hike to muscle. Yep. Let's try and get the group a little tighter. Hey guys, go ahead and jog up towards the front. Let's get uh, let's get the group a little tighter. All right, I just perfect. don't like being in front of all these yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Right. You can hang towards the back. That's fine. No, just trying to I keep mean, everybody I mean, grouped that together. Might just be old Dusty himself. <laughs> yeah. Do you know the ocean that laps against the rugged cliffs of Mount Gordo is a sight to behold. A blend of tranquility and untamed power. It waves rolls in, soft and rhythmic, washing over the shores with this gentle persistence, almost whispering se secrets to the rocky coast. From distance, the water seems serene, casting reflections of sky and mountain alike in silver blues and greens, creating a scene that feels timeless and untouched. But beneath the calm surface lies a hidden strength and undercurrent that speaks of nature's raw and boundless energy. As the tide shifts, the waves grow bolder. Uh, we'll let him pass. Make a hole. Yeah, bike around the trail, guys. Let him pass. Two bikers on the trail. Hey, let him pass. You good, <laughs> man. Right. Now, as the tide shifts, again. as the tide shifts, the waves grow bolder, hinting at the forces below. It's a place where beauty and danger coexist, the where the allure of peace draws you in, yet reminds you of the respect nature demands. Not just a picturesque post of view, it's a meeting of the land, sea, where each wave tells of both calm and chaos, inviting visitors to reflect and explore, but also to tread carefully. All right. It's going great. It's going really great. Didn't know any better. I'd say Ray's a little nervous. I think so. I mean, it looks like it's the biggest group she's ever had. I think. I mean, this is the biggest group up since we yeah. started doing this. We started around the same time, didn't we? Yeah. All right, guys. Just a full reminder: stay hydrated, folks. Drink plenty of water. Keep your energy up. Watch your step. <sighs> Here's this the steep part. Than a few hikers for a tumble. We Ooh. don't plan on stopping. Yeah. Hate this part. Uh, I forgot about this part. I black it out of my memory every time. All right. File everybody. Let's not push each other. This is a ridiculous trail. Try and keep it no more than two wide. Don't push each other over. That guy's still chasing the bunny. I mean, you if he falls, I'm not helping him. Be careful, folks. Make sure you're not pumping into right. each other. It's oh easy to fall on this part. Gotcha. Uh, oh, oh my god. Every time. We're almost there, Gracie. Every time. Dad, one of these times we should really build some steps up here. That would be very helpful. I'm gonna break an ankle one day. Oh, Alright, easy, folks. We got it. Yeah, oh, thank god. The, uh, oh, black ground. Nice. Jesus. It seems like it takes forever, but it doesn't. I was up here uh, we're gonna be... It's just, it's so bad, because going it's up, so... it's just miserable. I'm going to fall down at one going back one day. Okay. Yeah, I didn't bring any drinks. Uh, that's fine. We have drinks with our campers. I mean, our hikers here. We all have drinks. Plenty for everyone. Here you go, pink shorts. Here's a bottle of water. Mm -hmm. My name's Dustin. Yeah. Okay, here you go, Justin. Thank you. You told everybody to grab water, Gracie. Goodness. What? A couple people didn't grab water. Well, oh. we told them. Folks, make sure to pick up after yourselves. Anything that comes out of your pack goes back into your pack. Don't leave trash. 
But if I don't have a pack? Yeah, man. Respect oh, you. I'll take your trash. Oh, he just yeah, said right it. Back in the middle back, you're fine. Okay, that was somebody dropped Thank a bottle. You, Mr. Camperman. Of course, I'll take that bottle yeah. from you. We recycle around here. I guess some, right. the fish oh, are gonna get God. drunk because somebody right. dropped the oh. whiskey. There goes uh -oh. another one. Oh, it goes dude. Out, it goes right into the ocean. Party foul, but there don't litter, folks. Turtle. Folks, this would be a good time to have a protein monster. bar or a snack bar if you haven't had one. There's no monsters. Are you offering me a protein shake? There's no monsters. What's your one? All right. When they, when they I have no protein bars. Oh, okay. Well, I have protein shakes. Nice. Why, is, why did okay. he want the shakes of that? Just You're my preference. All right, all right. Let's go, right, guys. Let's get it back. Yeah, let's go. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Oh, Justin, hey, you're one of a kind. Go. Sorry. Lisa would have been a nice little. Right. Swim. Sure, you don't have any protein shakes? Yeah. Oh, quiet, Gracie. <laughs> Are you uh, enjoying the hike here? Yeah. That's I'm good. Let's go have some nightmares, that's for sure. Yeah. What? Nightmares? Nah, everything's good. Nothing even scary, man. I just heard never been just now. We're good. Uh, we're good, Tommy. You guys good? Oh, yeah, we're good, man. All right, we're almost to the first lake. When we get to the big lake, that's where we're setting up camp. Yeah. Didn't know if old scary pants he was gonna run back on the trail alone at night. Eh, no, I just I forgot scared, my but... trail mix, that's why. Here you go, but hey, take something out of my bag. I hate this part. You know how many times I've tripped and it's all Oh god, yeah, you tell us about it every time. <laughs> okay. Oh okay. I'm just saying See if I offer you any snacks. I'm pretty sure I say that every time too. So never mind. Man, you've been doing this. You've got me read much. like a book, okay, Gracie? It's, Look, it's, I've, I've, it's kind I've, of funny. I've walked this trail at the back of the lane with you many times. Man, kiss and make up already. Oh shush. Oh shut up, Tommy. Our next kind of story of legend right here. So the shrandling tree that's right up there, that tree right there. As a legend whispered among the locals, an ancient sentinel standing quietly on the trail's edge, thick roots echo anchored deep into the earth. The tree earned its name from the mysterious way it seems to sway and stretch its branches, as if waving to those who pass by. Some say it's a chanted, others call it a guardian spirit, but nearly everyone agrees on one thing, giving a friendly hello as you walk past, keeping its goodwill. Stories go that long ago a traveler lost in the world. woods came upon the trampling tree. Desperate not hope, they greeted the tree, and as legend has it, it saw freed rustle through the leaves, guiding the traveler safely back to the trail. Since then, people believe the trampling tree holds a protective charm, especially for those who acknowledge its presence. They say that those who pass by without greeting may feel a sudden chill or hear a distant whisper urging them to turn around. But if you nod and say hello, the, tra the trampling tree might just watch over you, ensuring your safe journey down the path. So whether, whether you believe in magic or not, doesn't hurt to give a friendly nod and hello as you pass by. After all, the trampling tree has been here longer than anyone can remember. And a small greeting goes a long way in showing respect for the legends and spirits of the woods. All right. Let's go ahead and continue on. He has settled in. She always gets nervous she's towards the beginning, but she settles out after. Once we get to this this small lake, she's usually good. Doesn't put out a lot of light, but I like hey. it. No, it's kind of like a warm, like cozy glow. Tommy, you doing good back here towards the back? You can go back up to the middle if you want. Uh, I'll get up there after we can get the path widens out. Oh, good luck putting that one. Yeah, we're don't want you to fall off the map. With no leaves, that's gonna be the trampoline tree. Hey, tree. Oh, man, hey, Jaden. Hello! Oh. All right. Hey, 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 come on. Hey, bud. I was in you trance. Sure you say I... It was like yeah, waving at me. Yeah, the shambling tree will get you. Hey, it's friendly, don't worry. Go ahead and jog and catch up to the group. There you go. <laughs> Justin, feel free to jog and catch up, bud. Stop telling me to run! Get your We're trying to on. keep everybody organized, my friend. I've been at the front the whole time. I can drop back a little if I want. Okay. Okay. 
You doing okay? You need some more water? I'm good. All right. Spicy one. Damn, huh? Problem is, from back here, we can't hear the stories anymore. You better jog and catch up. Anybody hear that? Oh shit! I got pepper spray. I ain't afraid I to use it. I hope I don't die. We'll be fine. It sounds really close. Ah, uh, they, their oh, sound is worse than their bite. Hey, kitty. Nope. Yep. You know, I think that might be. Sh I might. I think that might be a uh, Sherry the Mountain Lion, who's known to kind of. Yep. Yeah. Oh, another one. <laughs> yep. It's all right. We keep to the left. We'll be good. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where? We need those guns now. Oh no. Oh, but uh. Is he okay? That Riley girl? She has a knife. Or she had a knife. Really? Yeah. So that uh, Pete took off her. Okay, good. But uh. Because I, think... I will bury her in the desert. Oh, I'm I know you will. Though uh. It's our Miss one Ray... rule Miss... for this damn hike. <laughs> Miss Ray told, uh, said that she'd throw them off the cliffs, so. Our one rule for this damn hike, and nobody can follow it. No, there's always gonna be somebody. Next yeah. year, we're patting everybody down. Yeah, I'm gonna buy one of those, like, hand scanners. No, it's a great spray, idea. Does that count? Huh? No, you're fine. I'll with let pepper you spray. slide with the pepper spray. If you use it on I somebody, mean, you can go, consider we're gonna have a bear mace. Okay, yeah, bear mace, I'll, I'll let you live with it. You're not gonna accidentally, like, Kill somebody with any it. hard weapons though anything that is lethal it's a no-go it's our one rule for these hiking groups and there's always one person that can't seem to follow it there's always one that's san andreas for you yep i know but still man usually we everybody behaves oh, thank god we are here don't have to bury anybody in the forest this time well there's still time hey guys you wanna uh, gather in the campfire? Ready to start? Ready to start some stories? Oh, okay. show me. Let's go. Let's go where? The campfire. campfire. Where's the campfire, man? Right in front of you. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Nice. Well, my name's Mr. Cray. I said that earlier, yeah. Mrs. Cray. Right. Mr. Cray. Mr. Cray. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I apologize. Okay. For that. Oh, I thought she said Mr. Cray right, so for a second. This right here, where I'm standing, I'm comfy, is going to be man. where people will kind of come up and tell their story. Everyone else, if you want to sit beyond that campfire. Uh, so pretty much, I'll be right here if you guys want to sit beyond the campfire. Just that way, we don't set you all on fire. Should we get a little but further close back enough. then? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then. Whoever is talking, if they just, you know, want to be shouting, you know what I mean, when they talk. And then we'll just make sure everyone can hear each other. Alright, man, I got a haunted story for you. Yeah, they say that objects, you know, on a person who creates an unimaginable spark of emotion, those objects become possessed with that energy, man. There's a mystic presence to them. You know, one of these very such items. It's the mirror of a famous author. One who wrote about the twists and turns in a magical adventure. And how the evils were cast into his very mirror. Their spirits started possessing it, man. They say that the eyes are the windows to the soul. And what is, uh, you know, what's a mirror but a window, man? You, you stare deeply looking at yourself, yet... It isn't yourself looking back at you, and you don't even realize it until it's too late, man. You're trapped in the void of the mirror looking at your own figure, and all of a sudden you're alone, and that thing is out there lurking in your very skin, man. So when you have these magical emotions, you know, you 
check your objects, man. It may take your own life. That's the haunted story. That's Ooh. kind of nice. chilling. Nice. nice. Yeah. That's, pretty That's nice. Up. All right. Does everyone, uh, does everyone hear me? Yep. Yep. Answer. All right. Perfect. All right. This story is about a boy who used to suck his thumbs. All right. Now this one. All right. Now there was a boy who used to suck his thumbs. His mom told him to stop, but he wouldn't. So she cut off his thumbs. That's all. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy that. All one. right. Cut off my oh, thumb. Bad mother. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Jeez. All right. One way to parent. Yeah. All right. Who Gary. wants up next? Was their All last names turn. Jingleheimer? All Smith? right. Can y'all hear me? I hear you. No, yep. we're good. Yeah. Nice. Let's go. Oh my God, are you Canadian? Oh, maybe. Anyway, once upon a time, deep in the woods. There was a group of friends who set up a camp on a chilly October night. They gathered round a, a crackling campfire, munching on s'mores and telling ghost stories, much like we are. Suddenly, there was a rustling in the bushes. Naturally, each person assumed it was the wind, until one of them, let's, let's call him Jimmy, jumped up shouting, It's a bear! and promptly threw his s'mores in the air and bolted straight into the woods. The others sat there, stunned as they watched his flashlight beam bob and weave through the trees. Moments later, he reappeared, panting and looking embarrassed. It was just a raccoon, he announced, holding up a marshmallow that he apparently grabbed from who knows where as he fled. But that, that was just the start. Later that night, they heard a spooky woo sound from somewhere near the trees. Must be the wind, said Claire, the calm one. But no sooner had she said it, then the wind whooshed again, this time followed by an actual boo. It turned out to be one of their friends, Max, who had snuck, snuck away earlier to mess with them. Jimmy jumped so high he spilled his hot cocoa on himself and immediately fell backwards into the tent, pulling it down into a tangled mess around him. Everyone was crackling up until they saw a real raccoon now inside the tent with Jimmy, staring him down over the spilled cocoa. A standoff ensued. Jimmy froze, unsure if he should move, while the raccoon boldly reached out and dragged the mug closer. The rest of the group burst into laughter and shone their flashlights at the raccoon, cheering it on until it got startled and darted out into the tent, only to come back moments later with its raccoon friends apparently drawn by the smell of the cocoa. Now, with the three raccoons circling the tent, everyone panicked, scrambling for marshmallows to use as bribes to coat the raccoons away. In the end, they offered up a plate of s'mores as a peace offering, which the raccoons eagerly accepted before disappearing into the night looking quite satisfied. As the group laughed and tried to settle back down, they heard one final rustle in the bushes. They all froze, hearts pounding, thinking it was the raccoons making a comeback. But out stumbled a sleepwalking hiker who blinked at them, mumbled. The raccoons told me about the cocoa and then wandered off again before anyone could process what had just happened. And that, my friends, was the night they survived the great raccoon attack of Camp Chaos, forever leaving them with an epic, albeit ridiculous, tale to tell around the campfire. <laughs> That's crazy, mate. Wow. Nice. Time to follow that one up. <laughs> All right, Gracie, oh. I got you. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah? Go for it. This guy's walking into the campfire. <laughs> Guaranteed. All right. So one chilly night, a bunch of friends, just like all of us here, were sitting around a campfire deep in the woods. We had one friend named Charlie, who was always the type that had to be the first to show off his survival skills. You know, the guy that could start a fire with two rocks, make a fishing hook out of a twig, that whole spiel, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that night... Charlie decided he was going to impress everyone by showing off how he could call owls. He learned it from a, quote, secret owl calling masterer he met while camping alone, which, of course, nobody believed him. So, with a dramatic flair, he let out this weird low hoot. Nice one, man. It sounded like he was trying to gargle and sing at the same time. The group tried not to laugh, but they were all kind of side-eyeing each other, trying not to lose it. Then, after a few rounds of Charlie's owl calling, 
the forest suddenly went silent. And then, out of nowhere, they heard a perfect hoot back. Charlie, proud of himself, puffed up and showed his chest off, thinking he'd done it. So he hooted again louder this time, like some kind of owl opera singer. And again, the owl responded. Except this time it sounded closer. And closer. Everyone started looking at each other nervously, not sure if they should start running or be impressed. But not Charlie. No, he was convinced this owl was like his spirit animal or something. So he kept calling out. And the owl kept dancing. Each time louder and closer until it sounded like it was right on top of them. Finally, someone sh shined their flashlight towards the trees. And there it was. A tiny, scruffy-looking owl sitting on a branch right above them. And here's the thing. The owl wasn't even looking at Charlie. It was looking directly at the bag of marshmallows he had open. Turns out, this wise old owl was more interested in their snacks than answering Charlie's owl calls. But to this day, Charlie swears he has a special connection with it, uh, owls. And he insists his owl, it was his owl call that brought that little guy down that night. But... Secretly, they all knew it was the marshmallows. Hell yeah. Woo! Oh, 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 Alright, I'll give you that one. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. Yeah, come on, Jesus. So, this is a true story of something that happened to me a couple months ago. I was on the beaches of Sandy Shores and there was a bus so I decided to sleep on it because I always have a hard time sleeping so I thought if I was on the top of a bus no one would mess with me because they wouldn't see me so I fell asleep and then I started hearing noises like traffic and just kind of complained a couple times that I couldn't sleep. But then I opened my eyes and realized the bus was moving as we were entering the humane labs. And then we went inside and these doctors led me in. At least I think they were doctors. They took me into this room and said I could have all the food and water I wanted and then close the door behind me. Next thing I know, it's two weeks later and I'm at the front gate of the Humane Labs and had to walk all the way back to Sandy Shores. Thank you. Hey, wow, man. Nice. Hey. All right. Jack Creature was more of a whisper than a person. His name echoed through police stations and over quiet campfires. But no one ever truly saw him. At least no one who lived to tell the tale. The first story was an old one. Almost a local legend in small towns like Sandy Shores. Parents would warn their children, Don't go out into the woods at night. Jack Creech will get you. But most thought it was just that. A warning, a tale to keep kids safe. That's until the bodies began to turn up. He never left a trace, only whispers and rumors. Some said he wore a ragged coat, stitched from the clothing of his victims. And the colors were always orange and bright. Others said his eyes glowed in the dark. And others said his eyes looked almost dead. Most terrifying of all were his hands. Long, spiny fingers tipped with nails that could cut through flesh like butter. And they were only evidence, those strange, unnatural deep gadgets that marked every place he'd seen. Then one night, a girl named Sarah stayed out late with friends. She was fearless, confident that they were safe in her own neighborhood. Her friends left, and she began a short walk home. The street lights dimmed and the air grew colder, and shadows twisted strangely in her peripheral vision, and her steps echoed in the silence. Halfway down the road, she saw something in the trees, a flicker of movement. She quickened her pace, and then she heard it, a faint scrape, nails on the bark, drawn closer, following her. She turned at a glance, and it was just enough to hear, you're gonna miss the feet. 
Here oh, comes Jack Creature. And she saw his figure step out of the woods, wearing a sh wearing an orange coat. His eyes glowed, and they looked dead against the night. She ran, and feeling his cold, sinister presence inching closer. His nails dragging through the air, his whispers echoing around her. Run, little one, run. Sam was low, was grating, seeing human. The next morning, he found her, only a scarf caught in a bench at the end of their woods. Deep claw-like marks leading into darkness. To this day, people still warn each other, don't go out at night. That creature's out there waiting in the shadows, and he's going to be collecting his next story. That's the end. Oh, wow. there's no way that would that, that would never happen in real life. I'm not trying to scare anyone, but what's that all up right. on the hill? It looks like lights. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, like um, all the way just, at Chiliad? That's just the moon. That's just Chiliad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Where is Baz going? Baz, Baz. Could be in Sandy Shores. Yeah, yeah oh. Frank. Can you go grab him? Yeah, yep. <laughs> Where is he? All right. Is anyone else? What is she doing? Stories? Yeah, he's here. Quick <laughs> this one's the scariest story I've ever told, man. It's the tale of the pup plant that grew up and smoked its grower, man. You know, normally we like smoking, but this time the cannibal killer. It's a cannabis who's cannibalizing its owner, man. Its name was Mary Juana, and it grew up really big because some guy used way too much fertilizer of his own make, if you know what I mean. And it grew up and it smoked its grower, man. I right. wouldn't want to do that, man. Uh, okay. And then we'll continue our hike down back. Uh, but just stay seated while uh, I tell you the story of Short Sky in the back. Boz, if you want to go ahead and give a seat down here at the group. It's Baz. Just sit down. Hey, Baz, give with the group, man. Alright. It's an experience. Sit down, sit down, man. I'm sorry for scaring you, Come man. Come on down here, get boss. On the group. We'll get you. Come on. Everyone in the circle. Don't make me self combust. Alright. Yep, just everyone's gotta be sitting for this one. Alright. Alright. Sit down. Please. I know how to sit. Just give me a minute. Okay. <laughs> feisty one now. Alright. Real feisty. Okay. All right, guys. Our last story of the night. In the vast wilderness of Mount Gordel, nestled deep in the heart of Blaine County, an old legend whispers through the trees, carried by the wind over the rocky cliffs and rushing streams. The mountain itself is said to be alive, a garden of nature, watching over its hidden groves and shadow trails. Generations ago, the locals believed that Mount Gordel was home to a powerful forest spirit. A creature woven from the mountain roots and rivers, its essence tied to every tree, stone, and creature within the range known as the Echo of Gordo. This spirit was both the protector and punisher. Uh, it rewarded those who treated the land with respect, but misfortune would come swiftly to those who took from it without care. Animals that ventured into the deep forest were said to be under its watchful eye, and hunters who enter its domain could hear whispers in the trees, as if the mountains were speaking directly to them. At the heart of the legend lies a tale of a lost soul, a traveler who ventured up the mountain alone, hoping to find peace but finding something else entirely. The tale goes that he stumbled upon a hidden grove, thick with ancient trees and veiled in mist. There, he encountered the Echo of Gordo, a figure half-hidden by shadows, its form shifted in between the shapes of a massive stag, great bear, and a phantom-like figure cloaked in fog. The traveler in trance stayed for days, learning the ways of the mountain, but he was warned never to return without an offering of respect. When the traveler eventually returned to Blaine County and shared his story, some scoffed, but others believed. From then on, it became tradition to leave small offerings when visiting Mount Gordo, a simple token like a stone or a pine cone, a gift to appease the echo and honor the spirit of the mountain. Today, people still tell the legend of the echo of Gordo around campfires. Some claim they've seen strain or a lot looking through the trees at night or hear the eerie sounds of footsteps in the mist. Others say they encounter the spirit themselves, feeling its presence, watching from afar, ensuring that Mount Gordo's natural beauty remains untouched by greed and malice. 
But the leaven legend lives on and the echo of Gordo endures forever guiding the wild heart of the mountain. Alright, well everyone stay stay seated. Uh that was that that was the uh that was the story of Echo. I thank you guys for coming. So great. If you guys just want to say, awesome. yep. And yet, who say seated? Say seated. Say seated. Coming up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Come to my yeah. land. Okay. Setting fires. This is... You scar <laughs> my earth. Driving stakes into my soil, leaking trails of garbage like wounds on my skin. You take and you take. And if this place where yours to claim no more you will taste my fury I curse you now I turn you around 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 for it's growing far from these ground let the waste and ruin visit thee Roof, guys, lighthouse! You need to get to lighthouse! Stone. Oh my gosh, lighthouse! Uh, you need to go! I you need to go! You need to go! Oh, 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 back the way we came! This one we can take. This one will be ours. Yours. Time to run. Oh, what the hell? Time to run. Run, run. <laughs> Help! Help! Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> no, no, please. <laughs> You look especially tasty. No, no, I'm not tasty, I'm gross. Keep that lady behind me. Keep that lady behind me. Keep running, me. No. It's gonna eat you. No. I'm gonna pick you specifically. I can't say that. Turn it up. <laughs> I will eat you. <laughs> Better keep <laughs> going. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but you're just scrumptious. Come here, boy. Don't eat me. Come here. Forsake our cursed lands, our sanctuary. It's right behind oh. me. Oh my god. I'm gonna run. Oh god. I'm Stop feeling extremely me. hungry. How is it so fast? <laughs> oh my god. Just sit for a while. <laughs> I really like you, Justin. Oh, wait, you think we want in the opposite direction? Hmm. Don't let anyone look back here. Hey, don't come back. The ultimate price. Uh, 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 uh. 
It's like my body is care about me now. Go home. Uh, 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 uh. Oh. Oh. What happened? What's going where, on? Where's everyone going? What? Why is everyone taking off? What? Where's everyone going? Hey, what's guys? What's going on? Hey. Oh, what happened? Whoa. Hey, whoa. What happened? Where's what's everyone going? going? Where are our hikers? Where's everyone, where's everyone going? going? Where's everyone going? Where's everyone doing? Hey. Whoa. Hey, guys. What guys, happened? Where's what everybody happens? going? What? What happened? Uh, what what's happened? going on? I don't know. They all leaving. I guess. I guess that's hey, the end of the hiking the trip. Map. Hey, dude, you're right. What happened? Everyone, where's everyone leaving? Why? why scary is... shit happened. Sc scary shit? Uh, nothing... Yep. Gotta what? go. There's Sasquatches. Watch out. Sasquatches. They, they were saying something about Sasquatches? Yeah. What? We haven't even started. We, we haven't got the hiking trail that's yeah. not coming next month. No, we haven't even yeah. gotten started. Yeah, yeah we, we haven't even started up the mountain the yet. Why is okay, well, down the hill still? Okay. I'm not sure. Well, I guess that's it. Yeah, oh, I guess well, we'll uh, continue Tommy, did on. Yeah. Happen? Uh, no idea. Well, there's a guy uh, over there. He's I got lost. Hey, welcome to the Mount Gordo hiking trail, man. You ready to purchase your ticket? All right. Wanna One. do it again? Do it again? Uh, but we haven't even done it yet. Away from here. <laughs> what? Was it supposed to be camping out by a lake, telling stories around a fire? I mean, yeah, but that's what it says on the the leaflet. That's what we did. But we haven't. Grace. We we haven't we haven't done it yet. Gracie. Yeah. What's up? <clears throat> We're about to start the pre-hike. I guess everybody's leaving already, but yeah. we're going to start the pre-hike. Oh, okay. They're, Let's yeah, go. They're, they're claiming that they've already done it, but, like, there's no way. They're it's just me, way. you, uh... Frankie? Pete, and, uh, Ray. Ray, oh. Ray. And, uh... And Tommy. Oh, well. Well, I guess it's a small... I don't know what happened. I mean, we're a month out oh. from the actual hike. Yeah, I mean, this was just, like, a practice. This was a pre meetup, yeah. Like, make sure everybody could get through it okay. Oh, well, I guess it's just, uh. Where is Pete? Where did... He was with the group just a second ago. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. Hey, Ray! Where did, where did Pete go? Ray! Hey, where'd Pete go? I just saw him. I was going to grab Gracie. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, everyone's so, yeah. claiming that they've already yeah. done the hike. They're... We've not done it yet, have we? We haven't. No, we haven't. No. Weird. No. That's weird, yeah. Well, yeah, they've we guess what? Well, I guess we'll just yeah. have to do it mm -hmm. alone and, uh. Yeah. Oh, well, it ain't our first time, gang, but where's no. Pete? Yeah. Uh, I'm not I sure. I want to start with that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know me and Gracie usually lag behind, but that's just to keep everybody safe. Well, you yeah. know, uh, like he, he likes to get far ahead, me. All right, let's continue, I guess, our hack up. Let's go. Yeah. Continue up this way. Yes, nobody wants to show up for the pre-hike. No. no. Well, Isn't that something, not. Gracie? Hopefully they'll show up for the actual hike. Yeah. I mean, this was just like a physical readiness test to make sure mm -hmm. everybody could do the hike. All right, just getting my uh, stance good and going. Yeah. You All got right. this, May. Let's do Let's this. Let's go. All right. Time to start walking. Do you know? Yeah. Yo, let me tell you a tale about the ghost of Mount Gordo. You know, I'm a story that's haunted Ooh, the quiet one. trails it's and my Maya night winds of Blaine County for years. You know, they say that many moons ago, Jolene Craney Evans was devoted wife tied by love to a man named John Cranley, an ambitious stuff man who dreamed of the glitz and glamour of Vinewood. Jock and Jolene was different souls. He was fire and restless, itching to carve his name and fame while she held tightly to the roots of her small town life. For Jolene, the rugged lands and clear skies of Blaine County were home.